Uh, thank you so much for bringing this up, Dominique. I mean, there's a lot of these environmental sort of, you know, disasters, for lack of a better word, that happens that, you know, uh, that people don't know about and that are just like right in our backyard. So it's really important to be, be, be aware of because, you know, a lot of this can affect our health, um, our quality of life. So, I mean, this is, um, this is, they haven't been able to put it out, right? And vapor mm. is kind of coming out of this thing. And, um, but I, I mean, I guess it makes sense. I never thought about that. If you don't know exactly where it is in this giant pile of trash, how do you put it out? Um, mm-hmm. This is the Chiquita Canyon landfill for folks that are not following it. And uh, they're saying that the toxic fumes, just like you said, are creating uh, health hazards for the folks in that community. Um, benzene and other cancer causing chemicals. Uh, and I always, you know, this is one of my little fears that you know, we all have our phobias. Mine is about every time I throw a bunch of stuff in the trash, I think about these ever growing piles and piles of waste that we um, in LA, but probably most big cities just continue to accumulate and how just logically that can't be sustainable. So what are some of the kinds of solutions that people are looking at? Or are there any um, other than, you know, do composting or, 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 you know, make sure we throw our, our organic waste, our food waste in the green can? What are some of the other kinds of things we need to be looking at? Yeah, well, first thing I want to bring up, you know, uh, when I sort of, you know, looked at what was going on here in Chiquita Canyon is, you know, a lot of times it's private companies that are owning these landfills, you know, so I think it's important to hold them accountable, right? Because here's the thing, they're doing business near our communities, near where our kids are going to school. And so one, it's important for them to really make sure they they mitigate what's happening at the landfill and making sure it's not getting out of control, right? There's technology to do that. But yeah, the the other thing is, you know, personally, like you mentioned, what are we doing? But I, I just want to mention that a lot of times these companies have a lot of money and that should be taking care of things in an adequate fashion, which is really mm, important. Yeah, um, it's very important. Yeah, yeah. Exactly, exactly, right? If you're doing business in our community, make sure you're taking care of that business, right? Um, and the second thing is, yes, like personally, how can we focus on things like, you know, recycling, reusing, not using, you know, um, so much that we need to dispose, right? Because that's why we have, we have landfills, right? It's because... It's sort of like this piles on and on and on. Um, and so, you know, there's been, there's been um, bills, you know, at the state level to, you know, ban single-use plastic and, uh, you know, um, things like that and reduce waste. Um, so definitely on a, on, a, on a, you know, on a one-on-one level, on a household level, we could, we could do those things. But ultimately, I mean, you know, I've been on here before and I always said it's the, it's the job of the, the corporation or the industry to sort of make sure that they are being responsible if they're doing business in our community. Yeah, that's a great point. I, I, you know, I like to point that out, too, because we get a lot of commercials and a lot of guilt trips about how we as consumers suck and we need to do better. But the huge, ginormous polluters are the ones that are profiting off what they're doing. And Mm -hmm. they need to cut their profit margin by margin by enough to make sure they're operating safely, um, you know, and eliminating those things that end up in those landfills and don't just disintegrate, right? Um, here in California, we they're not uh, allowed to uh, use the styrofoam containers anymore, I think uh, after April 1st or something. Um, and yet I'm, you know, I'm not confident that these big companies are going to stop. I'm, I'm assuming they have a lot of this stuff, you know, piled up that they haven't used up yet. And uh, that's just one small example. Yes, yeah, hundred percent. And one thing I want to note is, you know, with chemicals, uh, a lot of the stuff could be odorless or tasteless, right? So there might be the fat mm. families might not be feeling this until they're feeling sick, right? Um, or they're noticing, oh, something's really up with my my chest, or I'm not feeling, you know, physically good. So it's it, that, that's the scary part about environmental, you know, pollution and sort of environmental health is that you kind of don't know until it's too late, and then at that point. You know, sometimes the city and the county is like, okay, we'll move you out. But it's like, well, I'm already sick, you know, and like, and, and my thing with the, with the moving out 
thing. Because, you know, we hear that our lockdown, Monique, there's an environmental disaster. Oh, yes, let's have the, you know, let's move us out. But that's that's our home, right? That's people's houses right there. Why are they expected to move move out when it's kind of too late? Or, you know, when, when then the kids are going to school, they, you know, they need to be now inconvenienced and travel longer to work and, you know, sort of move their lives temporarily or permanently. I just think that's unfair. That happens a lot when there's environmental disasters. We expect people to move out. You know, I think one of the supervisors in, the, in this area when I was reading said, well, you know, I think the company's doing all they can and we'll just have families move out. I see that all the time. And I just think wow. it's completely unfair <laughs> to expect, you know, people that are, are struggling, you know, while they're sick to move out. You know, I think it's, it's I think we need to really put accountability on, uh, on, on the landfill operators to do the right thing. Yeah, that's a great point. Talking with uh, Fatima Iqbal Zubair, and you're welcome to weigh in, call in if you got something uh, you are concerned about. When we come forward, one of the things I'd like to touch on is is Jordan High School and that toxic uh, plant that's right next door and, and where we are with that. Um, you know, I, I, I'm sure you're familiar uh, with KBLA Talk 1580's climate justice campaign. It's it's a top focus for us in, in the year ahead, and I'm I'm honored to have you on to break it down the science of our of our environmental well being um, and more on KBLA Talk 1580. She's reclaiming her time on KBLA Talk 1580. More first things first with Dominic DePrima when we come forward. We must understand the politics of our community, and we must know what politics is supposed to produce. produce. This election year, KBLA Talk 1580 is the place for politics, unapologetically progressive politics, and we've got two of the best and brightest to help you cut through all the noise. Weekdays at 1 p.m., it's a more perfect union with Dr. Nick Quarterly Corte. And at 4 p.m., it's Ariva Martin in real time. He's a university professor and distinguished member of the White House Correspondents Association. She's a best selling author and Harvard trained civil rights lawyer. And they are both here every day to help guide you through all the sh this year because you know it's going to get deep. Get your politics on weekday afternoons at 1 p.m. and 4 p.m. with a more perfect union. Hosted by Dr. Nick Quarterly Corte and Ariva Martin in real time. Only on KBLA Talk 1580. We've got your black flag. Okay, I know I can't be alone on this. Is anyone else behind on their Easter prep? Because it snuck up on me. Good thing I went to Kohl's. I found Sephora Beauty Finds for under 25 bucks that'll be perfect for my girls' baskets. And I saved 40% on cute dresses for them too. Then I got myself a stylish dress for 20% off plus an extra 15% off. Oh, and I earned Kohl's cash. Kohl's saves the day again. Select styles. Some exclusions apply. Sephora and kids' Easter looks. Coupons do not apply. 15% offer ends March 30th. See store or kohls.com for details. We've got a We've lot, got to, a talk lot about. to talk about. Hi, I'm Zoe Williams, a.k.a. The Voice of Reason, encouraging you to join me weekdays from 7 to 9 p.m. for the world's most intriguing relationship radio roundtable. Every night, I facilitate and encourage our loyal listeners to participate in the most engaging relationship discussions you'll hear anywhere. So make it a point to rendezvous with me, Zoe Williams, the voice of reason, Monday through Friday, 7 to 9 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Trust me, your relationships will never be the same. The VOR is on fire tonight. Unapologetically progressive. KBLA Talk 1580. We've got your black. black. What's that sound? That's the sound of downy, unstoppable scent beads going into your washing machine and giving your clothes freshness that lasts all day long. There it is again. It's like music to your ears, or more like music to your nose. That freshness is irresistible. Let's get a downy, unstoppable bottle shake. And now a sniff solo. <laughs> Nice. Get six times longer lasting freshness plus odor protection with Downy Unstoppables in Wash Sensi. Your ancestors' favorite radio station. Radio station. And your favorite morning show host. Let's get back to Dominique DePrima right now. Right now. Uh, right now. Let's uh, let's dig in. We're talking to uh, Fatima Iqbal Su Zubair over the um, Democratic Caucus, uh, Progressive Caucus, I should say, of the Dems here um, in California. And I was asking about Jordan High because I know they have this terrible 
um, recycling. I don't, I don't think it's a recycling plant. It's an iron and metal company um, called Atlas. And literally, aside from those things we can't see and the metal dust and such in the air, there, there were actually shards of scrap metal flying over the fence to the high school. Um, and I remember that the DA filed criminal charges, um, but I think the plant is still operating. Yeah, thank you for bringing this up. This is actually the school uh, I taught at, Dominique, so it's very personal to me. Um, you know, there's a, a lot of sort of environmental hazards happening in the Watts area. Um, yeah, it, it is. Uh, and, you know, actually, there were a couple of my students that were in, involved in sort of the activism, you know, around this with, I believe, the LAUSD, you know, board member who stepped in uh, to sort of bring this issue to light as well. So it, it's just a, a travesty because I remember walking to work every day and seeing, you know, I, you're able to kind of see what's happening. Uh, this recycling plan, and then you see kids, you know, practicing sports, going outside, you know, uh, after school, and it's just day in and day out, right? Uh, this this plant is right there and making them sick right by the school. I think that's the issue. Why are these, you know, sort of toxic sites, you know, operating right next to where kids are? I keep bringing this up, but this is such a travesty, right? That I mean, it's right next to the track, so the kids are running and <laughs> exactly. inhaling metal yeah. dust, like. I, to me, if this was in Brentwood, exactly. first of all, it never would have happened. Mm -hmm. But second of all, if it somehow happened in Brentwood or Bel Air or Beverly Hills, they would have shut it down within days. These white folks would not put up with their kids being exposed to... Oh, 100%. Uh, 100%. It's environmental racism, right? It yeah. is, And we see it happen time and, and time again where, you know, black and brown people have to fight so hard for like the most basic, you know, air, for the basic things, air to breathe, literally air to breathe. And, you know, I, I remember, I mean, I, I still talk about it because like I said, this is a school I taught at. By the way, I still work with students there in STEM, you know, in, in my robotics team. So I, I go there personally, right? As a mentor, I mean, don't forget there are teachers going in there, there are parents going I in mean, there. I mean, and it's also next um, to the Jordan Downs too, right? The project right there. Oh yeah. Well, people live right there. It, yeah, exactly. A hundred percent. And, um, and, and that, this is the thing, right? I mean, this is the silent killer of black communities and brown communities because we're telling them we don't really care. I mean, when we look at Dominique, like, you know, environmental racism is very connected to redlining and where, you know, we say, you know, folks can live, black folks can live, right? I mean, that, that's literally what we're saying. You can live in toxic dumping grounds. You can go to school there. It doesn't matter. We don't care. Like you said, this was happening in a very rich white neighborhood. I mean, it, it, It'd be there over. would be travels to body. It would probably be on CNN, right? Probably on yeah. CNN, on all the mainstream news media. And it would, right, it would right. end, like you said, right away. How yeah. does this happen? Well, these guys, uh, Gary and Mark Weisenberg, who own the, the uh, plant, they're facing 22 felony charges, four misdemeanor charges, and a civil lawsuit from the LAUSD. So why isn't it shut down? I mean, why? I, I don't understand how there's no injunction to stop the f operation. They've already found that the lead levels in the soil around there are 75 times higher than what's considered safe by the Environmental Protection Agency, which is not exactly strict, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and like, I mean, 100%, no amount of lead is safe, first of all, you you and I know that, like, um, so it's like, you should have no amount of lead, but the fact that it is already surpassing whatever limits the government has said is ridiculous. Um, yeah, I, I, why isn't it, I mean, I, hopefully it's going through the process, like you said, the DA is, you know, um, is, is working on it, but it should it should happen right away, and I'm glad they're talking about it here, because hopefully this will... You know, well, help, yeah, they, they said that... <laughs> they, it's, it off okay, so according to the LA Daily News, it says that mm -hmm. a, a judge ordered them to stop operating, but they're operating anyway. Again, if this was Brentwood, no effing way. Yeah. No, no, no way. Exactly. Um, so... I'm hoping that there's more attention put on it. And, you know, I know there's, uh, there's kind of community groups still working on it. And it's just, it's just frustrating. I hate saying, oh, well, it's going to happen soon. It's going to happen soon. Because like you said, it should have been shut down yesterday. Yeah. Um, you know, at the, at the very least, they should have moved the operations to somewhere far away from people, right? At the very least. Yeah. 
Absolutely. Um, but but it's happening. And, and and Dominique, I remember seeing like you know you know you you talk about how this affects kids learning too, right? I mean, I I remember as a teacher like you know you have kids feeling lethargic, tired, you know, all of that. I mean, this is all the impact of it, right? It's not it's impacting their health, and then it's impacting their learning, impacting their life expectancy, right? So it's it has very dire consequences. And um, again, I mean, when say, you, again, no amount of lead is safe. You know? And, and lead so. also, aside from learning, um, learning impairment also can cause violent behavior and all kinds of other weird things. Like it's very, very dangerous, mm-hmm. even in small amounts. Yes. And then, you know, we talked a lot about also just, you know, pregnant women, right. Um, uh, in, in South LA communities and stuff like that's affecting them too, right? So it's affecting their future future children, right? It's affecting everything. So, I mean, it's, it is appalling. And, you know, the fact that we're going to talk about it is, is really sad, right? Because again, again, just like what we talked about last about the landfill, this is a private company, right? Um, sort of just doing business, right? <laughs> Doing business, doing right business, people. poisoning I mean, kids. That's what they're doing. They're poisoning I, kids every day, and we're just 100%. allowing it to happen. And it really makes me mad. I'm sorry to start y- y'all's morning no, that's <laughs> shot right. out of a cannon, <laughs> but sometimes we need a little wake up call in our lives. And if we're talking about a, a climate justice year here on KBLA, I mean, there could be nothing more stark than a scrap metal plant spewing lead, scrap metal, and other pollutants right into the track and field of Jordan High School, right into the Jordan Down projects where, where people, Downs Project, where people live and, like you said, um, bear children. Uh, we got news, traffic, and sports. Then we're, we're doing more. We're taking your phone calls, keeping the conversation going. KBLA Talk 1580. More of First Things First with Dominique DePrima when we come forward. Thanks for joining us. I'm Mike Moore. Here's the latest from the Black Information Network. New York City is giving out prepaid debit cards to migrants in a $53 million plan. Eight debit cards were handed out Monday, and the number will expand to more than 100 by next week. Under the plan, a family with two parents and children younger than five will get around $350 a week. The plan is to actually save the city money by giving out the cards instead of food boxes. The NFL Detroit Lions say Cam Sutton was working out at the facility when news broke that he was wanted in Florida for an alleged domestic violence incident. President Rod Wood says that he was on a conference call when the news broke and members of the staff were able to meet with the African-American defensive back and recommend that he get a lawyer and turn himself in. And that's the latest. I'm Mike Moore from your 24-7 news source, the Black Information Network and BINnews.com. Drought, war, and rising food prices have doubled the number of families facing malnutrition. You can help. $50 $50 provides a food kit to feed a family for a month. Just text the word radio to 97646. Is this the tackle? This is the KBLA Sports Minute with Ray Richardson. Ray Richardson. The Lakers win two overtimes last night at Milwaukee without LeBron and still won. They beat Milwaukee by four to win their fourth straight. A monster game for Anthony Davis and Austin Reeves. AD had 34 points, 23 rebounds, and four block shots in 52 minutes. Reeves posted a triple-double with 29 points, 14 rebounds, and 10 assists. LeBron watched the entire game from the bench in street clothes. He's got a sore left ankle. The Lakers are 6-4 this season without LeBron. His status is uncertain for tonight's game in Memphis. The Clippers are back in action tonight in Philadelphia could be an interesting night for James Harden. It's his first time back in Philly since he forced the Sixers to trade him to the Clippers. The deal went down October 31st. Philly fans are not expected to be nice to him. No debates, no speculation, just the info you need. That's your KBLA Sports Minute. I'm Ray Richardson. More news, opinions, and conversation when we come forward on KBLA Talk 1580. This Easter, March 31st at 11.07 a.m., ECM will be at the Redondo Beach Performing Arts Center. We are inviting everyone to meet us there as we will be presenting the Black Resurrection Experience. What good is Jesus' resurrection if we are still living 
in cultural graves. ECM will present a stage play production that will address black dignity, black worth, black unity, black ownership, black vote, police brutality, generational wealth, mental health, black power through Jesus' power, and most of all, your purpose in life through the murder of Jesus Christ. And we will tell this entire story with singing, dancing, acting, rapping, with a little bit of preaching from yours truly, Pastor Chef, the Black Resurrection Experience. Easter morning at the Redondo Beach Performing Arts Center. It's totally free, so come get your free. J.P. Morgan Chase is building on the investments in California to help close the racial wealth gap and build a more equitable future. Visit jpmorganchase.com slash racial equity and get the tools to help reach your financial goals. I have diabetes. I'm at risk for pneumococcal pneumonia. I have asthma. I'm at risk, too. If you're 19 or older with chronic conditions like asthma, diabetes, COPD, or heart disease, or are 65 or older, you are at increased risk for pneumococcal pneumonia. Ask your doctor or pharmacist about Prevnar 20, pneumococcal 20-valent conjugate vaccine, a Pfizer vaccine that can help protect you against pneumococcal pneumonia in just one dose. Even if you've already been vaccinated with other pneumonia vaccines, Prevnar 20 may help provide added protection. Prevnar 20 is approved for adults to help prevent infections from 20 strains of the bacteria that cause pneumococcal pneumonia. Continued approval may depend on a supportive study. Don't get Prevnar 20 if you've had a severe allergic reaction to the vaccine or its ingredients. Adults with weakened immune systems may have a lower response to the vaccine. Side effects include pain and swelling at the injection site, fatigue, headache, muscle, and joint pain. For full prescribing information, please call 1-855-213-2138 or visit Prevnar20.com. Sorry, but we actually have a wait list for our Monstera. Shaw's Greenhouse is really bringing in the green. We can't keep snake plants and stuff. She needs a construction manager to build on her roots and grow. We could add a whole section for ferns. And here we'd have dahlias, dahlias, and more dahlias. Indeed can help her hire great people fast. I need Indeed. Indeed you do. You can schedule and conduct virtual interviews all from your employer dashboard. Visit indeed.com slash credit and get $75 towards your first sponsored job. Terms and conditions apply. If you're looking for the most epic place on earth, let's start at the base of a massive waterfall. Then trek through the thick jungle. Then climb to the peak of a snowy mountaintop. Then once you get there, keep going. Because with intelligent 4x4 and 7 drive modes and a Nissan Pathfinder, the search is the real adventure. Available feature. Intelligent 4x4 cannot prevent collisions or provide enhanced traction in all conditions. Always monitor traffic and weather conditions. Thanks for waking up with Dominique DePrima on KBLA Talk 1580. 1580. Yes, I appreciate you being here with us. And I uh, want to talk a little bit about some of the stuff that's being done since, uh, you know, I like to remind us that it's an all is not lost. There's always stuff that can be done and, and is actually being done. We're talking with Fatima Iqbal Zubair. Recently elected, uh, not that recently anymore, the chair of the California Democratic Party Progressive Caucus. Uh, talk to me about some, you know, some of the things that are happening in the state uh, legislature that give um, folks hope. I know uh, Assemblymember Isaac Bryan is really active around these issues. Yeah, so there's a couple of really uh, good bills. Uh, you know, one is. Um, ACA 16 is a constitutional amendment um, for the right for, you know, a healthy environment. Uh, that's that's a big one because it gives communities the right to organize when, you know, something happens to that, to fight back. It gives them, you know, the law essentially right to have on their side. Don't we already um, have the right to organize, one. though? I mean, I don't, I don't understand. How, how does this bolster mm-hmm. our activism? Yeah, so it well it it puts it kind of in the constitution, right? So I believe California has the right to clean water already, but we don't have the right to a healthy environment and clean air. So this would definitely here's the thing, when it's when you have some sort of precedent in the California constitution, and let's say there's something happening in your community and you want to fight back, it gives you kind of more legitimacy, right? To be able to say, Well, this is in the law that, you know, we deserve to live in a healthy environment. It's something it's a tool that we can use sort of bolster our organizing and our case. Okay, gotcha. Um, and so, yeah, yeah. I mean, I know we That's got a one. lot to cover. That's the only reason. Okay, so then you said there's another <laughs> bill that um, that you're tracking here. Yeah, and it's, this is kind of, you know, related to the 3200 setback uh, bill, which you know, hopefully uh, that passed, and hopefully we can 
talk about what the oil companies are doing to overturn that. But this one is um, another uh, Isaac Bryan, some member Isaac Bryan bill, which is AB 2716, which basically says, says if there's like, you know, these wells that are, you know, really low producing wells, they're called stripper wells, you know, within, uh, within, within uh, you know, feet of, you know, where people live, work and play, um, you know, the, 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 the basically those companies will be charged 10, something like $10,000 a day until they get, they get shut down, they, you know, and the polluters will be charged that, right? Um, and so there's, there's a bill to, you know, hopefully say that, you know, where, where folks live, it matters, right? It, it doesn't, it, they should not be living near, uh, you know, these, these, these oil sort of drilling places that are not even producing a lot that are economically not beneficial to the community, you know, they should be shut down. Well, especially when you consider that um, we let these polluters off the hook once they just stop using the wells, they just leave them there, and we, the taxpayers, have to have to cover the cost of, you know, cleaning that up, mm-hmm. which is outrageous. Right. And so at least if you're finding them when they're sort of winding down, maybe some of that money can recoup the cost that we're paying to clean up the toxic messes that they're leaving behind yeah 100 percent. that's you know that's again what's what's happening like you said the communities are forced to pay the bread that's our taxpayer money and it really should not be that way right I, there should be precedent that if you're coming to a community to do business and you're polluting that you should be the one paying to clean up to you know cap those wells right um so they're not just sitting there because you know even you know there, there's a lot of issues with these wells whether they're low producing whether they're idle right they are affecting, you know, we talked about the water quality, the air quality. I mean, this is, it's affecting it, right? Um, and so they should not, they should be cleaned up. Um, and a lot, and we're still uh, one of the few states in the, in the union that does not charge oil companies to tap into that resource, which is just insane to me because um, that, at least that could be used to clean up some of their spills and, toxic sites that they leave behind as well. Yes, 100%. And there's a number of uh, great bills this season. also want to bring up the, you know, the governors and the attorney general's lawsuit against some of the biggest oil companies, which is, I think, another attempt to create a some sort of fund, right? To say that you've damaged these communities for so long, right? Mm. <laughs> now let's, uh, you know, make, make, make you pay for it. You know, you should kind of pay your fair share based on the damage you caused. And so, um, it's exciting to see this happening from, you know, the state level on, on, on multiple fronts. Um, and, uh, you know, like you said, you know, hope is not lost, right? There are good people trying to do good work, uh, uh, whether it's local community organizers, whether it's elected officials that, are, that aren't sold out to big oil that want to, you know, fight for the community. And, um, and, that, and it's important because, you know, this is how we try to at least, you know, mitigate environmental racism and what's happening and hopefully try to end it one day. Okay, so you talked about this 3200 setback. Explain what that is mm-hmm. and why, even though that bill passed, it seems like it's not the final word. Yeah, and the first thing that comes to mind when you ask me that is it's because the oil companies always have so much money. They have, right, yeah. they have a lot of money to fight back and it's like endless profit margins. And so, um, what happened is we had this historic 3,200 uh, feet buffer zone pass, which is which says that you know um, that you you can't have you know oil uh, oil drilling happening within 3,200 feet of where people live, work, and play. And so the oil companies actually got a referendum on the ballot. It will be on the November ballot to basically overturn this law. And so you know voters will have a choice to keep the law, keep the 3,200 you know buffer zone. Um, or overturn the law. And obviously, you know, uh, we want voters to keep the law. Um, but, you know, I'm, I'm sure we'll be seeing, you know, ads from oil companies try, try to conflate and confuse people. So just be careful of that because that's what they do. They control the messaging and say, oh, this is going to be bad for jobs or this is going to Gas uh, economic, prices, you know, I don't know blah, what they're going to say. Yeah. That's lies. Yeah. But, yeah. They'll come <laughs> exactly. up with some lie. Yeah. But here's the thing. Exactly. Um, I wish we could get a bill that would say that when the voters pass something, you don't get to sue to stop it. Because I, you know, I feel like that is just like the recalls. It's a playbook for conservatives and big corporations. When they don't get their way, they can just simply use their deep pockets to undermine the will of the voters and waste money 
that, uh, you know, and confuse mm-hmm. voters. I hate it. Yeah, you see that. And there's conversations of that happening at the, I, I believe, at, you know, the, the local level, the state level. A bill like how that. We mm. Stop these referendums and these, you know, uh, you know, when you see progressive politicians get in, how do you, they are trying to get recalled, right? Whether it's the DA mm-hmm. or, you know, city council members or what have you. And it's, it's a huge issue. Like you said, it's a waste of money. Um, so I know there's conversations happening around that about how do we, you know, do that. And at, at the very least, there were state bills that were passed. Uh, you know, last year by Isaac Ryan to make the referendum process at least more just and yeah. more clear to voters. There's another bill this year to require uh, by Senator Gonzalez, you know, uh, sort of going off of Brian, some of Brian's bill to require uh, folks that do this to uh, to put, you know, put their funding sources, right? So people can see, oh, this referendum is paid by the oil companies or paid by, you know, some corporation. So, you know, there's efforts right now to make it more transparent. Right. Because the more information you give voters, they're likely to figure figure this out and and realize Mm -hmm. who's the bad guy here. Or make it easier to follow the money. Okay, so explain. uh, Talk to me a little bit. I've been I've been reading, but I admit I haven't done a deep dive around the um, the controversy of this gondola that's meant to go from Union Mm -hmm. Station to Dodger Stadium. Um, I know it's been controversial um, but I, I haven't really done a deep dive. So explain why environmentalists have a problem with this project. Yeah, and it's 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 complicated. Right? Some of this, some of these laws and stuff can be complicated. So I'll try to keep it simple. Um, and you know, uh, but one law it has to do with is called the California Environmental Quality Act, and it goes by CEQA, C-E-Q-A. And, you know, what this law is, it just says that, you know, I mean, you know, to, to kind of simplify it, it says that, you know, it gives community power to sort of advocate, you know, uh, for uh, for environmental justice when projects come to the community, whether it's, you know, some rich investor trying to build, you know, luxury housing or, you know, like this project that's, uh, I believe, a transit project that's going through uh, and, and the community is saying, well, you know, there is the park in this area. There is, you know, all these things, environmental benefits that we have um, in the land. And we want to make sure that if you come here and you build, whether it's a transit project, an infrastructure, a housing project, that, you know, it is done right. And you go through the, you go through the appropriate review. That's all it's saying, right? The community members here aren't trying to stop the project. What they're saying is, look, you came in our community, you want to build this transit project, you want to build, you know, build, uh, build something here. Let's make sure that, you've gone through all of the required uh, sort of assessment and, and review, right? Um, and I believe uh, City Council Member Eunice Hernandez, um, I think, just passed, passed a resolution with some other council members that I think believe passed to say, well, yeah, let's make sure this assessment, this testing happens before this project goes through. Um, and, you know, this is <clears throat> also, uh, it's also going to impact traffic some kind of way, right? So all that stuff has to mm-hmm. be, has to be, um, studied. That was one of the things I know that yeah. Hernandez, Hernandez was talking about is how is this going to, um, you know, impact traffic? We should all be interested in that. I think 809-20-1580. We're talking with Fatima Iqbal Zuber. I got some folks I want to talk to you. We'll do that when we come forward. I also want to get your thoughts on some of these progressive wins uh, in the past election, because there actually are quite a few. It's KBLA Talk 1580. A safe place to go loud. 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 A great place for progressive politics. KBLA Talk 1580. Hey, L.A., be an eco-friendly hero. Join LADWP's Power Savers program and use your smart thermostat to help ease strain on the electric grid during peak electric demand. You'll save electricity while you lower your bill. Plus, as a power saver, you can get up to $185 in prepaid gift cards. Don't have a smart thermostat? No problem. Shop and sign up at LADWP.com slash Power Savers program. That's LADWP.com slash Power Savers program. 
To help combat climate change, LADWP is helping neighborhoods have better access to electric vehicles by awarding nearly $130 million in EV rebates to customers just like you. From big savings on used EVs to building new charging plazas, LADWP is charging ahead to help all Angelinos experience the benefits of EVs. Get rebates of up to $4,000 for a used EV and $1,750 for a charger. Learn more at LADWP.com slash EV. That's LADWP. EV. With your Los Angeles Public Library card, you can access the latest music, movies, audiobooks, ebooks, graphic novels, and more, all for free. Check it out at lapl.org slash emedia. That's lapl.org slash emedia. We're not for everybody, but we're for everybody. You're listening to KBLA Talk 1580. Substance use disorder and addiction is so isolating. And so, as a black woman in recovery, hope must be loud. It grows louder when you ask for help and you're vulnerable. It is the thread that lets you know that no matter what happens, you will be okay. When we learn the power of hope, recovery is possible. Find out how at startwithhope.com. Brought to you by the National Council for Mental Wellbeing, Shatterproof, and the Ad Council. KBLA Talk 1580. We've got a lot to talk about. KBLA reminds you that when we fight, we win, and we don't black down. LA Community Action Network, or LA CAN, was formed in 1999 when 25 residents of downtown LA came together and acknowledged the problems that existed in their community and made a commitment to do something about those problems, to stand together, organize, and become a force in the community that demands change. Civil rights and preventing the criminalization of poverty are their core projects. In addition, they take on women's rights, the human right to housing, and healthy food access. LA Can also has projects focused on economic development, civic participation, voter engagement, and community media. While downtown LA remains their home base, with a particular emphasis on the Skid Row community, in 2007, they expanded their housing and healthy food access work into South Central Los Angeles. LA Can believes that power for low-income people and people of color is achieved through a large, active, and well-informed member base that utilizes a multitude of methods to advance their messages and goals. If you'd like to join the Los Angeles community, Community Action Network and organize people to fight back against oppression, please visit cangress.org. That's cangress.org. This is a community call to action from KBLA Talk 1580. JP Morgan Chase is building on the investments in California and around the country to help close the racial wealth gap and build a more equitable future. As part of J.P. Morgan Chase's commitment, they are taking action to help improve financial wealth and access to banking in the black community, helping more people open low-cost checking and savings accounts, hosting community seminars with supporting black-led institutions by building awareness about financial investments, hiring community managers, and opening community center branches like Crenshaw, Inglewood, and downtown L.A. Visit today jpmorganchase.com slash racial equity. Again, jpmorganchase.com slash racial equity. Get the tools to help reach your financial goals. Visit today jpmorganchase.com slash racial equity. Again, jpmorganchase.com slash racial equity. This is KBLA Talk 1580, where everybody is somebody and nobody is a stranger. You belong here. Yes, you do, and I'm glad you're here. 809-20-1580. If you want to jump in, we're talking with Fatima Iqbal Subair. She's the uh, chair of the California Democratic Party Progressive Caucus, and we're going to go to Randy from Watts. Good morning, Randy. Good morning. What an interesting topic this morning. Oh my goodness, you have no idea the the Pandora's box that you're opening. I mean. I've been in this area all my entire life, and I can think of at least five dump sites that people live on every day right now, and they have no idea what's underneath there. Mm. And I wondered, when my father was alive, and we said, they did what? And he said, yeah, one of these days they're going to find out what they're sitting on. I mean, you know, and, and they will, and they do have problems in Beverly Hills and Brentwood. 
uh, case in case in, uh, in point here, uh, Sepulveda Pass. Those beautiful homes on top of the hill there, just on the uh, uh, west side of the uh, 405 freeway, as you go up by Skirball, those those mansions in there. <laughs> if you'll notice there down below, there's a bleed off. There's a there, 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 there's a there's a there's a facility that runs night and day, and if you look at it real hard, you'll see the methane they burn off. That was a Sepulveda dump. It was open for 20 years, and those houses are on top of it. And then we, 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 when we get closer down into our neighborhood, uh, we're talking about oil wells. I mean, we got we used to get paid royalties on one at the 99th Street Elementary School here on Century and uh, in Wadsworth. There's a there's a sipper well right there that produced oil for many years. But scarier than that is Carson, a hundred uh, Victoria and Avalon. From there, all the way to the 405 is the Main Street dump, and those houses are sitting on top of it. And when we were and when when we was dumping at that particular time, there was no regulations, so chemicals were dumped in there along with rubbish and solids. And 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 as the years pass, they sell it, and the developers put houses on it. And I wondered when is the California state of California going to look at this? And like, what the heck is going on? All right, Marina uh, del Marina del Rey, Mar- Marina del no, that harbor. That was David Rockefeller's number one oil facility, and I still see the bleeder lines going from there to the plant. Okay, hold that thought, Randy. I want to get uh, Fatima's um, response when we come forward on KBLA Talk fifteen eighty. She's reclaiming her time on KBLA Talk 1580. More First Things First with Dominic DePrima when we come forward. Okay, I know I can't be alone on this. Is anyone else behind on their Easter prep? Because it snuck up on me. Good thing I went to Kohl's. I found Sephora Beauty Finds for under 25 bucks that'll be perfect for my girls' baskets. And I saved 40% on cute dresses for them too. Then I got myself a stylish dress for 20% off plus an extra 15% off. Oh, and I earned Kohl's cash. Kohl's saves the day again. Select styles. Some exclusions apply. Sephora and kids' Easter looks. Coupons do not apply. 15% offer ends March 30th. See store or Kohl's.com for details. With your Los Angeles Public Library card, you can access the latest music, movies, audiobooks, ebooks, graphic novels, and more, all for free. Check it out at lapl.org slash emedia. That's lapl.org slash emedia. This is KBLA Talk 1580, where everybody is somebody and nobody is a stranger. You belong here. Okay, uh, Fatima Bear, Randy with the long list of projects in, in Watts and this um, occurrence that is, you know, repetitive of, of building on top of uh, toxic sites, you know, how do we address that if I, if I live, work, or, you know, I'm part of a community where I think uh, this has happened as, as Randy has kind of outlined here? Yeah, and yeah, and then Randy was ready to go on as well, right? I see this is yeah, an he had a list amount of mm-hmm. uh, there's an endless amount of amount of sites, um, and you know, I just want to point out, you know, while yeah, this is happening all over. I mean, statistically, it's happening more in communities like Watts. Uh, and I mean, he mentioned Carson. I'm glad he brought that up. We had, you know, something happen in the Dominguez Channel. I think uh, a couple years ago that got people sick. You know, I that, I lived in Carson at the time, and so yeah, it's it's happening all the time, and and. Honestly, what's, what's sad is I wish I could say there is a bill or there is something, you know, here that will, you know, kind of clean up all these toxic sites. But really, it's a, it's unfortunately incumbent and it shouldn't be this way. You know, I'm noting that upon, upon the community to kind of speak up and speak out, like Randy said, and make sure the county officials, the state officials, the city officials are, are doing something. And if you have the right sort of representatives, you know, hopefully they can sort of clean up sites in, in, in your area. And, you know, it's, it's something that should be happening because like Randy mentioned, you might be living in a house that's atop something, right, that you don't even know about. Uh, and that is, th- that is what's happening. And what, what Randy described is, is sort of a bit of red, redlining, right? It's like, well, it's okay for black and brown communities to live on top of this, you know. And, you know, as he mentioned, yes, if some of this happening in other communities too, yes, but, but statistically it's much higher in black and brown communities, right? Uh, because it's racism. And so, um, 
it's important for, you know, for people to speak out and advocate, I would say, to their local city officials, county officials. You know, there are sort of funds that should be dispersed and used to clean these sites up. You know, unfortunately, some of the damage can't be undone, right? Because once it gets into the soil, once people are sick, that's some of that's irreversible. But look, we have kids being born in this community. We have pregnant mothers and it sh- we should be working on bettering this issue. It's just ridiculous. So... Well, time flies when we're talking uh, important topics. Got a couple minutes here, Fatima. I, you know, I asked about progressive wins, but I'm going to hand it to you to do mm-hmm. with as you will. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'll I'll end with that. Then you know, we, November is an important election. We talked about some um, some important things that are going to be on the ballot. Just remember to vote, well, keep the law, right? To keep the 30 to 100 foot buffer zone. That's important. We have some city council wins, right? Uh, I think in um, uh, in uh, CD14, uh, I think I believe CD2, you know, we had, we had CD14, we had Isabel Jurado uh, get the top spot over Kevin DeLeon. Let's get her in. Uh, there's yes. another kind of Jillian, I think, Burkhardt in CD2. So, yeah, I just want to shout out these progressive candidates. We need to expand the progressive block on city council. We're talking about environmental racism. Well, this, the L- LA city can do, can do a lot, right? And we need the right people on there who want sold out to big oil, to corporations, to developers, to one, build the right type of sustainable housing, not on toxic land, right? That's affordable. And also, mm. you know, help people fight back. So I'll, I'll just end with that. Just remember to vote. We, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's not just top of the ballot, right? Uh, it's, it's those down ballot races for your local city council, your county, your DA that you should be focusing on so we can actually, you know, have the right representatives to help fight back. Yeah, a minute left. Um you know, I, you got to come back to talk about some of these runoffs. Any anyone that you want to highlight? Um, I think I, I mentioned a few city council candidates. You know, I will say I think uh, Shade uh, El Hawari got through. I think in eighty eighty. Well, I know in eighty fifty seven. So I want. I would love to see her win as well. Um, uh, there's there's a bunch that's you know happening across the state that I can think of. But I'm thinking. Local to LA, I need a. We need a whole show on that. Yeah, we absolutely on, on that do. because there's just so many to break down. Yeah, you're um, right. But I think I think Senate Senate District 35. I just mentioned Michelle Chambers as well, running against an, an industry uh, candidate. So we, I want to see her get through as well. That's my Senate district. All right, uh, Fatima Iqbal Zubair. I know we can find you on X. <laughs> yes, uh, I, I believe I'm at Fatima I Zubair. I'm on X. I'm on. Instagram. Um, yes, please get in touch. I'd love to engage with anyone that wants to talk about anything progressive. Thank you for shedding light on so many important topics this morning. Thank you, Dominique, for having me on. I really appreciate it. Wealth Building Wednesday is next on KBLA Talk 1580. KBLA 1580 Santa Monica. Thanks for joining us. I'm Mike Moore. Here's the latest from the Black Information Network. New York City is giving out prepaid debit cards to migrants in a $53 million 